Well, welcome back to our study called Knit Together in Love. We're in Colossians 2, uh, 1 through 5. Then we're looking at 4 through 5. And uh, we talked about the unity that we find in knowledge. Lack of unity divides us. And the lack of knowledge divides us. And uh, so today we're talking about uh, what Paul says in verses 4 through 5. So Paul affirms that uh, this unique Christian unity by saying that even though he's not physically present with them and may never be physically or may never have been physically present with them, um, he is with them in spirit. This is what unity is all about. And, and uh, though he may be separated by space or time, um, we are one. We love our fellow churchgoers. We love those that we hear about that are suffering in the Middle East for their faith. But we also love our brother Paul. We are knit together with our brother Peter and laugh at his impetuousness. And we see ourselves in him. We love our brother Elijah. We long to see our sister Ruth. We await the day when we can embrace Moses. Though we are absent in body, we are present in spirit in the city of God where the angels are in festal gathering and the assembly of the firstborn awaits our arrival. Paul being present with them in spirit also means that he affirms that they have the knowledge and understanding in Christ and that is uh, has led to the right practice and right doctrine. Paul rejoiced that these followers of Christ have good order. This is the old Greek military term that described a cohort of troops that were arranged in rank. This, would, this word is used in the book of Hebrews to describe the priesthood of Aaron and Melchizedek, that there were different ranks of positions, that there was the chief priest, there was the lower priest, there was those, the people that were just, you know, cleanup group. If you read through the law, you'll see the, the good order that God established for the priesthood to follow. Um, different tribes did different tasks, and different families had their own responsibilities. There was a chain of authority with the chief priest overseeing it all. The reason why Zechariah, the father of John the Baptist, was in the temple of offering incense when the angel appeared to him is because of the appointed order, the good order. Paul uses the same word to tell the Corinthians in 1440 that everything in the church should be done according to this order. Paul clearly taught them that what the order should look like, and which he also explained to Timothy and Titus. The Colossians who had heard the gospel also heard of how the church should be structured and followed the instruction. Paul also rejoiced in the firmness of their faith in Christ. Paul uses the word firmness only here in the New Testament. In classical Greek, it was used in reference to a foundation something that uh, another thing rested firmly upon. In the Septuagint, which is the Greek translation of the Old Testament, it was used to refer to the firmament of the sky, which is what the earth was placed upon. So you get the picture. Paul rejoices that their faith in Jesus was a firm foundation, like the sky in which the, the earth you know, rests on. Their lives were built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. That is the ultimate foundation for a life. Paul was excited to hear the report from Epaphras about these people because they had good, well-ordered church life and their belief and doctrines were grounded, firmly placed, firmly placed upon the foundation of Christ. We'll come back next time and we'll conclude our study for this week. <laughs>